The Shivers was published in 2021 by Pop Fiction Games, created by a team of people. The lead designer was Andy Logan, lead illustrator was Bill Tiller, and paper engineer was Rene Jablo. Pop Fiction Games provided this in exchange for an honest survey. Two to five players explore popular locations and work together to solve mysteries within larger stories. This is a narrative game, but I'll avoid spoilers as much as possible. The photos used are from the tutorial. Play as a Shivers family member or a friend. The base game comes with six playable characters. The Deluxe Edition adds a cat and dog. Each has their own personalities, abilities, and fears, and is represented by standee. Write yet discovered information on your board. Alternating turns, a player performs a single action. Move to another room, interact with objects or NPCs, and so on. Talking to each other does not count as an action. In addition to the characters, one person acts as the storyteller. They'll act as guide and narrator, lay out the scenarios, puzzles, and control NPCs. Each room has a matching card that slots into the pop-up. The front has art for the characters to see and interact with, and the back has hints and instructions for the storyteller. The storyteller is like an RPG GM. You'll read pre-written parts in the guide and the room cards, plus improvise depending on player choices. Characters will sometimes be asked to roll a die when performing an action. Each die has four faces ranging from it works to backfire. The green die is more likely to succeed and the red die is more likely to fail. To break it down, explore to find clues and solve the puzzle in larger mystery. That's The Shivers. Our games of The Shivers, including the lengthy setup and takedown, average 90 minutes. As always with these types of games, we get into the role playing and explore the entire experience. If you run through things quickly, I could see sessions matching the time in the box. Give yourselves at least 3x4 feet. Depending on the scenario, the play area grows more than you'd expect. I slightly prefer those with four people. The additional character has their own take on clues and the mystery, and exploration is faster. Be mindful of character fears when choosing which one to use. A strong rating 7 year old could enjoy this, although look things over first. I want to avoid spoilers as much as possible, but there are ghosts and monsters. If you're familiar with Scooby Doo, the tone is more mystery incorporated than where are you? My mom ran the shivers as a tutorial for me and dad. I immediately gasped when she pulled out the box to reveal the room. The art is incredibly detailed, though I think the blend puzzle has a mistake because of an extra music staff line. It looks as good as any other game I've seen, and the pop-up work is incredible, though you'll need to fix things that lean after a while. Finding a clue after physically opening a cabinet is super cool. Episodes can stand alone, but bits and pieces come together in a series' larger arc. I recommend playing each of a series' episodes somewhat close together to help not only puzzle solving, but the role playing. I mentioned in Family Facts that this game is spooky, but thankfully not scary. I would have been fine with most of these when I started reviewing, although some bangs, for example, have a bit more intense art. While the rules and gameplay are simple enough for non-gamers, the box, game like, and play area all make this something you can't just toss into a backpack and bring anywhere for a quick game. In those cases, like for summer camp or indoor recesses, you may want to consider Van Ryder Games' graphic novel adventures. I'll add links to the all-ages co-op sets I've reviewed at the end of the video. Speaking of Van Ryder games, I love Detective City of Angels. If you're familiar with how that game's chisel card works, the answer keys here work similarly. By reusing cards to have two or four versions of a room, it cuts down on the fairly lengthy setup and takedown, and saves storage space. Probably money, too. The storyteller can sit behind the play area and run things because they've all the information. Did I say all the information? My biggest complaint is the storyteller role feels limited compared to actual RPGs and incomplete in terms of this game. In Detective City of Angels, the chisel is two page tar with every witness's statement and the rest of the case's details on the next page. There's never a delay in responding to players. Here, you have a small version of what everyone else sees, meaning you might not know what they found if they're not certain either. Hold on, let me look as well, as you stand up and lead across the table, kind of pulls you out of things. Instead of the story card backs being so text heavy, it would have been better to have a legend and a bigger sheet with everything on it. Right now, you sometimes look at the picture, sometimes read the text, sometimes fiddle with the episode guide in front of you, and sometimes need the storyteller's companion booklet. It's clunky. It's unfortunate because there are role-playing opportunities that are a lot of fun. If a player's stuck, out of the corner of your eye, you spy a row of ants marching towards the pantry. Maybe they sent something sweet. A player didn't find anything useful? The piano tuning is so poor that you must distract yourself with something to get the melody out of your head. Take another turn. A player can be knocked out, so now the group needs to revive them. If they fail, have them return as a ghost. It's not the game that has frustrating limits, but the tools. This is pretty much my only complaint with the game. 
With all that said, I preferred being the storyteller. It's simpler to run than an RPG, even with little prep work. I enjoyed knowing where the scenario was going, working with the characters while still giving them a challenge. I got to put roleplay NPCs, so I wasn't left out of that side. Strong reading 9 year olds could give it a shot, but I would recommend players play a few times first to better understand how the game works. The puzzles are appropriately difficult for the age range. When me and dad played the tutorial, we overthought every possible detail, coming from escape rooms, Sherlock Holmes consulting detective, Detective City of Angels, and Lucky Duck's narrative mysteries, and messed with our ability to simplify things, but it's great for younger players or grandma. Speaking of the tutorial, it's a nice way to get you used to the system, but it's not necessary if players are familiar with escape rooms and adventures. The first episode gets you used to things quickly. The ShiversGame.com has errata, which is nice, but also some stuff to help gameplay. Video tutorials? Nice. A Spotify playlist? Super cool. Blank cards to create your own stories? Now that's interesting. I mentioned that the deluxe box includes playable animals. Only experienced role players should control these because communicating is difficult and you need to think like a pet. I really like playing a Shep the Dog in the final episode. I sniffed out things that the humans missed, but wasn't at my best because the raging thunderstorm had me terrified. The expansion had a surprising amount. Some companies would just include a new character or two, maybe a new room. Here you get new rooms, stories, and NPC standees. Everything fits in the main box, which was a nice surprise. Remember that you can make your own scenarios, so these rarely add to what is otherwise a mostly one and done game. The Shivers is a narrative mystery game for families. It's equally cute and spooky, and if older players are willing to understand its target audience, I think they'll have just as much fun staring at experience with younger ones. If the issues I mentioned are fixed in future editions, more people could enjoy this without feeling overwhelmed or discouraged. I loved my time with the Shivers, and hopefully this video helps you decide if you will too.